actually my teacher and my teacher is nature so I actually refer to myself as a urban green man which is to follow the principles of nature and to that end I've made a deck called sustain yourself cards and written books about how to live green with green wisdom and I think that's really the base of a lot of what I think about and how I phrase things is look at it from the point of view of nature that was James Wanless our guest for today's podcast and you want to travel with her and you want to travel blind and you know that she will trust you hello I'm Suzanne Taylor and welcome to my podcast searching for unity in everything Meaningful Conversations with Meaningful People. You'll see on my logo, Sue Speaks, which is my website, Sue stands for Searching for Unity in Everything. How are we going to turn this world around? Can we turn this world around? Well, everything I have done has been in that pursuit, buoyed up by that famous quote from Margaret Mead, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. In fact, it's the only thing that ever has. Well, my guest today is James Wanless, and if he were in charge of the world, it would be so different from the one we have now. We'd be having such a good time. (laughs) I'll read you a couple things from his bio, because I couldn't make this up. Human potential trainer, inspirational speaker, mentor and entrepreneur, grows people and organizations based on four core life values, how to be whole, creative, sustainable, and wealthy. (laughs) James Wanless not only thinks outside the box, his universal integrative and expansive approach to life makes the box obsolete. (laughs) A big tall order to pin down James into one little podcast here, but we're going to try a little background on him. He's a graduate of Occidental College, where he also was a jock, I believe. He was captain of the football team and the basketball team. He can correct me if I'm wrong. But then he became a professor of political science at Columbia University. And now he is a widely recognized expert in the art of integrating timeless wisdom into modern life. Wow, if we could do that, we'd be home free. The accomplishment that I'm most aware of, because it's been involved in my life, has been that James is the creator of the Voyager Tarot deck, which is really quite an unusual tarot deck that is like none other and is universally very, very popular. And James does a lot of workshops, internationally, actually. I'm just going to read you his latest email because he's been emailing every day uh, the year of the dog. So this is Happy Dog 55, just to get a little sense of James before he gives you a sense himself. This is what the email says. Bark! (laughs) Get your fashion dog on. Dress special to bring out the special in you. All the world's a stage, a play. Evoke the character and wild card in you. Free yourself to be all that you are and can be. You are what you wear. So no boring, same old, same old jeans. (laughs) Okay, James, what have I left out that you really want people to know before we probe you for what makes you tick? which is what this podcast does with all its guests, more so than finding out, you know, all your accomplishments. Well, we'll, you know, we'll put that in a little spot here. (laughs) But what I really want to know from people, people who I find interesting, who I think really could affect the world, what affects them? What makes them who they are? So before we get on to that, what, what do you want to add of your current activities, what you want people to know about you? (laughs) <laughs> I thought that was a great introduction, Suzanne. All right. I love that. I'm barking. I'm barking. <laughs> I, I think what is most important to me is actually my teacher. And my teacher is nature. So I actually refer to myself as a urban green man, which is to follow the principles of nature. And to that end, I've made a deck called Sustain Yourself Cards and written books about how to live green with green wisdom. And I think that's really the base of a lot of what I think about and how I 
phrase things is look at it from the point of view of nature. I love that. That's fundamental. If everyone looked from the point of view of nature, we would all be doing it right. You know, that would be in tune with the rhythm of the universe such as it is, you know, rather than this control we try to exert where greed runs our show. What about an accomplishment you're proud of? I think the fact that I have moved out of kind of the box or the organized world of academia, for example, and I've gone my own way professionally, followed my own passion, followed my own purpose, and have gotten onto the, the spiritual path as my profession, which is not easy. Uh, but I just really feel that I've broken free. And, and liberation is my highest value, actually, and I'm living it. So I feel really good, regardless of what happens out of it. I feel really, really happy with myself for that. Well, how about, do you have a destined sense of destiny for your life or a sense of mission with this freedom that you are now experiencing? Yeah, you know, destiny is a big, heavy word, that's for sure. And I, the Japanese, because I worked there a lot, we kept, kept asking me, so what's your destiny, Dr. James? I got like, destiny? I don't, I don't know. I just like what I'm doing, you know, whatever. But then I really started thinking about it. And I think within certain parameters of our interests and our DNA and so on, we have a sort of a destiny, but how we play it out specifically is up to us. We do have free choice there, but I th my destiny is to carry on as an educator. I mean, I could call myself a mentor or this or that, but ultimately educate, which is to lead out. But when you go back to the old word and to, and that's my goal is to, be an educator to help people move out of the the old ways of thinking so that they can evolve and grow. I didn't mention you have a PhD. I don't think, but of course, you'd have to have one. Normally, you know, a teacher would teach within academia, and that yet you've got your destiny out there beyond that, outside of that. All the things you're saying are what would make this a much more wonderful world. Have you ever had a moment of awakening? where, you know, all of a sudden you went out of the normal and got out there beyond the academic reality? Yeah, my, my moments of awakening and, uh, was basically out of setbacks. I, I believe that there is no success without a setback, a uh, strategic retreat. And um, when I got a, a hepatitis and I was traveling in India, I thought, well, what am I going to do? So I went to a Tibetan Buddhist monastery and spent a month meditating with the golden Buddha light coming through me and all of that. <laughs> and I walked out of there healed of hepatitis and changed. How different from Colombia. Exactly. <laughs> and New York City and really? all of that. But I realized the power of the mind and the power of, of light and enlightenment and the path. And of course, the hardest part about that is once you're on the path, how do you pay the rent? <laughs> that was kind of the big question for me. I'm not a Buddha where I'm going to sit on the corner and, and, and cut all desires. And hopefully somebody <laughs> gives me money. I mean, it's just not going no. to happen. No, I'm not. <laughs> but they wanted me to stay because I'm a good meditator. Ah. But I have emotions. And what I've noticed about meditators is they're very, you know, very level, mm. very even. Mm. And that's just not me. Well, the Tibetan <laughs> Buddhist meditations are fun. Because they're trippy. I mean, they're like movies. I mean, you go places. And ah. it's like, oh, it's not like the, uh, the the Pasha meditation where you just sit and observe things as they are. But the Tibetan Buddha like, whoa, we're taking off and we're going places in Buddha golden light and blah, blah, blah. Chariots and things. I didn't know that. you got to teach me that. <laughs> I sort of avoid getting placid and because I like to have a good time too. Right. No, of... it's highly imagin imaginative. Wow. Yes. Okay. Yeah. After this is over, we have a little lesson coming. Kind of... <laughs> Do you have some answer to who your greatest inspiration may have been? Yeah. I was a child and I found out that my grandfather on my father's side was knighted by the King of England. Sir William James Wanless for his medical service in India. Wow. And and his wife, my grandmother, wrote a book about him and all of that. And I was so impressed by his life. And I, I just got into that whole feeling of a life of service. And so it was never, never about business or money or, uh, I don't know, playing baseball even or anything. Like that. It was about being of public service some. 
How? He, he wasn't alive? You didn't no, know No, I never saw him, never met him. He was deceased, but uh, that still sticks in me. It was the first moment of like, hey, I want to be of something greater than just, you know, nice little life. Something bigger. <laughs> but how wonderful that you had such an inspirational forebear, you know. Another question for you, what makes you come alive? Is there uh, anything beyond what you've already mentioned? I love walking fast and breathing hard. Uh -huh. <laughs> These are okay. tips. These are good. This is good. Oh, it's uh, the endorphins kick in. Really? The happy, good feeling. And it's the all in the breathing. Really? The aerobic is huge. And all the science about breathing, you know, like this several times a week, going for a fast walk, breathing hard, change it. You grow brain cells. You have to teach me some things. I'm so sedentary, you know. Let's move on to some broader ideas, not about your own background, but <clears throat> what you're thinking about the world. What do you think about humanity? you think we're going to make it? I think because we're in this strange time now, you know, Politically, the zeitgeist is chaos and people are upset and angry and depressed and so on and so forth that I think that's it is kind of influencing a little bit of my dark thinking at this point in time because we have madmen running around with nu nuclear weapons, people ignoring a climate change and nature bats last and nature wins. <laughs> and we are in our complacency and our human pride and ego not really, you know, we're ignoring that. We're ignorant. And so I, those two issues, particularly the climate one, the earth changes and the nuclear one and a lot of other stuff. And I look, I, I don't know. It's I dangerous. Really yeah, for sure. I mean, what do you think? Or do you think uh, I don't know. you have a thought? I think it's in the balance. I, I do would too. I would not bet on it one way or another, yeah, frankly. I agree with you. And to me, it's unfortunate, but a lot of times good changes happen out of traumatic events. Yes. Like yes, out of too. wars or whatever, mm -hmm. yeah. or diseases or my hepatitis or something like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So, but when you talk about weather and earth change, a, a, tra a tragic situation might be overwhelming and you can't recover. Yeah, you know, humanity has this wonderful proclivity for really getting bigger and, you know, challenges get, um, you know, addressed and with the shared um, intelligence of all of humanity, it's amazing what we can do. But then again, we have these ignorant people running the world and uh, that precludes that intelligence from holding sway. I, I, I That, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's the root of my pessimism. Yes, yes, here. yes, yes. Well, I'm with you on that one. Do you horse around with any evolutionary ideas, things that you think you would actually make massive change? Well, yeah, other than this catastrophic events here, unfortunately, is just... I know in today's world, there's so much different kinds of media. There's so many different possibilities and complexities. I don't think we know exactly how to do anything anymore. But I think the underlying thing that I'm doing now for the first time, maybe in my life, even though I'm a political scientist, is get active. Participate. Because we're a spectator nation. And we watch and we sit on our couch and, mm -hmm. die, and we die by comfort and mm -hmm. complacency. And we have to wake up. And that's what we're in a moment of wake up. And I love the physics law that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Mm -hmm. So as might we see this governance in ignorance, basically, well, people are waking up and participating, even if it's just getting out the vote. I mean, votes can, massive voting can take over money and madmen and military and all of that. So to me, it's about participate, 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 okay. however, wherever you are. Okay, I buy it. Yeah, yeah. Now, how do we get that to happen? That's a whole other question. That's another question. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> really? yeah. Do you have any little ideas? Like, how can we make it sweeter for each other and whatever? Something? Well, I like, I like, for example, what you're doing. All right. Yeah, I mean, you, you have circles here at your home. Yeah. And how can we make L.A. a more peaceful, harmonious city? Yes, we do have a little project on our way. How to make L.A. a friendlier city is one of the little projects in the hopper around Exactly. Here. As right. long as we're doing that right. and, and others, right. you know, things built, can right. build. The last thing I would mention here or ask you here is that I'm asking everyone to give a one-line message for the world that I've asked you to contemplate. And I wonder 
what yours might be. Uh, mine is know your life purpose. In my studies of nature is everything in nature, every living organism in nature except human beings. Everything in nature knows exactly who it is, what it is, and, and, and its purpose, what it's supposed to be doing, why it's alive. They're so much in sync with their environment, everything, whether it's a bacteria thing or a beautiful plant, whatever, a bird, we don't care. Once we get back to knowing why we're here at the deepest level, everything changes. I mean, the studies are awesome these days about knowing your life purpose is you're going to live longer, you're going to be healthier, you're going to be happier, it's good for aging, you know, so on and so forth. It's unbelievable amount of studies about knowing life purpose. So that for me is it. Well, I couldn't agree with you more. You know, all of nature before us had instinct and, you know, it didn't control its purpose. And we're the first things to come along in the known universe that actually has choice to make and yes. uh, can choose what it is that we are up to and this terrible worldview that's based on greed that really should be based on uh, caring about each other as much as we care about ourselves. That's the massive purpose of everybody, you know, that really needs to get aligned with that idea. But I think that's a very fundamental thing that you're saying that indeed we'll put this on the master list. That's an excellent contribution. Well, oh, thank you. We could talk forever. Right. <laughs> <laughs> really, really. I mean, I haven't begun to say all the wonderful things about you that I could have said. And people can see um, where your website is. They can go check it out for themselves to find out more about you. Now Suzanne takes your hand and she leads you to the river. So, dear listeners, thank you for tuning into this episode of Searching for Unity in Everything, Meaningful Conversations with Meaningful People. Be sure to check out suespeaks.org slash podcast, where you can find out more about James, subscribe to our podcast, and leave your comments and feedback. We'd love to hear from you. How did you feel about the episode? Did you learn anything? Or were you inspired to act in any new way? Or do you perhaps disagree with anything that we talked about? Also, while you're on our website, do explore and comment on some of the other content. There's a cup of consciousness for everyone. And you want to travel with her And you want to travel blind And you know you can trust her For she's touched your perfect body